a quick video on something speculative. I haven't built it, but I'm going to describe it in the hope that someone else does. Or maybe they've already built it and might wish to share their experiences in the comments below. Anyway, a lot of you enjoyed the video I did of my crude portable QRP setup. I was down by the beach on a day pretty similar to this and I had six contacts in about two hours. I was using a seven megahertz crystal controlled QRP transmitter, about five watts, and just a national Panasonic transistor radio on seven megahertz. That radio didn't have a BFO, but I was able to provide a BFO by having the local oscillator of the transmitter running continuously. Anyway, what I'm going to speculate about today is, can you receive CW signals without a BFO? And of course, if you were to just tune by on the receiver, you'd hear a sort of thumping, um, maybe even some clicks if the transmitted signal has key clicks. But basically it's like this. And you might be able to make sense of that if you're used to that, but it would be nice to have a bit of a tone. Now, I was reading through this 1923 book. I'll just show the title now. And it was on making crystal sets. And there is a chapter on crystal sets for CW reception. And how they did it was they interrupted the audio going into the headphones. And they used the innards of a clock. Basically, I think it was a spring and of course there's various gears and you have quite a fast reel turning around and they were able to have a little bit of metal springy thing that essentially interrupted the signal between the diode detector and the headphones by quite a high rate, like I think it was even 500 times a second. Anyway, that was enough to provide a chopping action, interrupting the audio at a high speed, and that allowed a tone to be received when the set was tuned to a CW signal. I haven't actually tried it, but a modern version might be to do exactly the same thing with an AM transistor radio, one that covers a shortwave band, and you would then just interrupt the line between the radio and your speaker or headphones. Now, a way to do that, I haven't actually tried it. I don't know if you would be able to get as many interruptions as required. It needs to be in the audible range. And several things I've thought about. One, maybe some sort of IC circuit that chops the audio, shorts it to ground, something like that. Or even, I was thinking, something from a hardware shop. People use them for, I don't know, finishing off metal, taking all the birds and whatever. Anyway, it's a round thing, got lots of wires going outside. A um, lot of wires, it's, it's uh, really densely packed. Anyway, it fits onto an electric drill. Maybe you could put it on a hand drill. You might get some electrical interference if you use an electric drill. You know, if you put it on a hand drill and drill it like this, and then you could have one connection to the spindle of the thing, and then another connection to the bits of wire on the end of this rotating thing. Anyway, that should interrupt the audio at a sufficiently high rate, hopefully, to make it audible and provide sort of a crude BFO action, although it operates in a different principle, and allow the reception of CW signals on an AM receiver. Haven't actually tried it. I know the selectivity would be very poor. Um, unlike a BFO, where a signal off frequency would be a different tone, so you'd be able to select it if you're good at selecting audio. This, you wouldn't be able to do that. So it's pretty much only good if there's a strong CW signal and there's no other signal nearby. Still, it would be easier hearing that tone than if you're just listening to the uh, without anything like that. 
it would produce a crude modulated CW effect in the speaker. Haven't actually tried it. If you have, let me know. I've got too many other things on to build it myself, but anyway, I recommend investigating it, making one up, especially if you're into home workshop stuff and you already have one of those in the workshop, and I think it would be fun. Let me know how you go in the comments. And another thing as well is you could maybe even use that same thing as a spark transmitter. The main things you'd need, you've got this thing that interrupts the current, so you've got a battery, this interrupter thing, then you need some sort of tuned circuit, ideally, and then an efficient coupling method to your antenna. Then you'd have a spark transmitter. So you could potentially have a spark Morse station with a transistor radio and this chopping thing. Anyway, all very speculative, haven't tried it before. It's raining, as you can see, so I've got to go in and produce this video. Have fun. If you've had any experiences, let me know in the comments below.